Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya, if this is your very first time here. Today we are gonna be doing a powder video. So we are gonna be talking about the difference between setting the face and baking the face. We are also gonna be doing a demo on that. We're gonna be talking about the colors of powders and which one to choose for your complexion, as well as just some tips and tricks about powder in general. You know, how to wear them, why to wear them, when to wear them, all that. Oh, that jazz. Yeah, I already know what I'm about to say. In my fashion, we did do the full face. So, if you are here for the chill, let's go ahead and kick it. But if you ain't, here are your minute markers. <laughs> Keep your life away to the powder talk. But if not, sis. Let's kick it. Before we hop into it, please make sure that you hit subscribe below if you have not yet so that you are updated when new videos come out. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell as well so that you are updated when new videos go up. All right, babes, let's hop into it. So I know I already have makeup on, <laughs> but I wanted to just give you guys a real talk, a glimpse of my life sis. I just got done filming some content for a brand. So usually <laughs> I am bulk filming things, y'all know since I'm still working full time. But this is a look that I actually wanna do for you guys because I did not set my face, which is crazy. And I feel like we have like a really naturally radiant look going on. That's the tea for a future video. Right now we're going to just wipe her down. If you guys watch my IG tutorials, we just gonna pull a trick out of one of those videos in three, two, one. Good as new. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are fresh faced, sis. Based on what I feel like I know about you guys, you guys like when I do my full face even though it's more of a focused video like this one says. If that's something you like, please reinforce that feeling that I have <laughs> in the comment section because y'all know I am all about giving you what you want to see. And of course, this is my LA Girl Brow Pomade. And this one is in the shade Soft Black and I'm just shaping my brows. And I'm gonna go in with my Too Faced Concealer in Chestnut, born this way, and sculpt these babies up. I want my brows to have a smidget more definition today, so I'm gonna go into my Benefit Give Me Brow, and this one is in number six. I'm just kinda gonna brush through my brow hairs to just kind of define them. It's like a colored brow gel, pretty much, is what this is. So it is kind of the same shade as the number six in the Cabral or the Precisely My Brow. It's not clear, is the point, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> I think we might go in a little bit ham with NARS today, and I did get the Orgasm X collection in PR, so I do love the two quads that they sent me. I did do a look on my Instagram using this palette. I used this shade and this shade, and y'all really love that video. I just posted that over the weekend, but I also have this one. Pink, sis. Pink. <laughs> First of all, before we're talking about this, let's go ahead and prime the eye. <laughs> I'm gonna prime my eye with my Too Faced towards the top and then bring in my P. Louise base towards the bottom. When I wanna go into a lighter shade for my eyeshadow, I definitely like to blend it into like a brown shade up here, just because I don't like that white cast that might be around the lighter colors. You know, I want it, want it to pop, which is why I'm going in with the lighter color, but I still want to be able to, you know, have that ombre into my natural concealer shade, if that makes any sense, even though concealer shades are natural, but <laughs> you get my gyps, sis. Let me look on my channel and see how recent it's been since I did something pink. Cause I'll be trying to like, <laughs> not repeat myself as much as much as possible it's been about a month so <laughs> i think i think i think we can get away with it so i'm gonna go into the orgasm x quad here and this is the one that is pink this is orgasm and this one is orgasm x with the pink shades so in the crease i'm gonna go into this shade here which is okay first of all let me get closer <laughs> All right, in the crease, I'm gonna go into this shade right here and just kind of dust that into our crease area. We're gonna make this more of like a soft blend today. And I'm keeping this mostly on the end. I'm not really like, y'all know how sometimes I'll bring it over the lid. I'm kind of not doing this. Mm. <laughs> y'all, I just be so indecisive. Okay, I'm gonna bring it a little bit, <laughs> a little bit over the lid, but not too much. I do wanna kinda keep this mostly on the end. And this brush is the Sigma Soft Blend number 20. So next I'm gonna take a flat shader brush and go into this shade right here. Ooh, that's pretty. 
and I'm just taking short little motions and just dabbing it in the middle. This is kind of like a plus pressed glitter because I do see it with a little bit of fallout. Boy, that's cool. The face ain't done yet, which is a benefit of doing the face second. <laughs> but I'm just kind of like wiping this across and bringing it all the way up. I'm not focusing just on the lid underneath the crease. I'm bringing it upwards and I am blending it into the deeper shade on the end. Okay, so y'all know I'm thinking about putting a different color <laughs> on the inner part of this. <laughs> y'all know how I am. I'll be wanting like a pop of a different shade. And I'll just give you guys something pretty to look at <laughs> while we are talking about the powders. Okay, so before y'all judge me <laughs> and how crazy this eye is. <laughs> So y'all know I said I wanted to do another color. Um, in my mind, I was thinking of El Malicon from the Alamar Volume 1 palette. So I pulled her out and I started to dibble and dab in that color. So let's start there. <laughs> this is a play-by-play -play of why we ended up with a glittery eye. <laughs> So I'm gonna dip into El Malacon. Like I said, this is the Alamar Volume 1 palette. And I went ahead and started to put this on the lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the inner part of the lid. And first of all, sis, look at that. So, so pretty. So I'm gonna just blend this here on the inner part of the lid. Not paying attention to my crease. She don't matter at this point. As you can see it under the crease, physical crease, and at the top. So I'm just looking down into my mirror with this flat brush and pushing it over. Then I'm also gonna flip it and kind of do it this way and push it into the skin right here. I'm also gonna take a flat brush or a clean brush in a minute to further emphasize this blend. And that color by itself does kind of mess up the blend right here. So I'm gonna go back into the color or the brush that I used for the pink shade and dust over it with that. And that will kind of like marry those two colors. Better, better sis, better. I'm gonna take a clean brush, which was clean before I did this eye, <laughs> and just go over the top of this to make sure that there is no line of demarcation there. Then I'm gonna pop into a slight bit of what you could call glitter. <laughs> I'm gonna dip into my Glitterly Obsessed from ColourPop and this is in Glam Rock. And with a little brush that's about this big, very small detail brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of this cause this is like a, not a loose glitter, it's more of like a jelly glitter. So I don't wanna swipe this cause it can take off the shadow that's already there. This doesn't have a mirror, I don't know why I just opened that. <laughs> Yeah, why do I always panic when I drop stuff? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna just take it and start to press it over El Malacone. And you can move it while it's still a little wet, but you wanna be careful with that because uh, it can mess up the pigment of whatever's underneath it. So it's more of like a placement type of thing versus a swiping type of thing. And then over the pink part, I'm gonna go into Glitterly Obsessed again, but this one is in Moonlight Legend. It is a pink tone, but it ended up just kind of looking the exact same as the other one. <laughs> so essentially, I could have just used the other one as well, cause it's not really reading as pink on the lid, but I'm just scarcely placing it on the lid. I don't want just glitter. I kind of want accents of glitter. So I am using my Bossy lashes from linked out these are my favorite lashes that they sent to me they did send me a nice amount of other ones but apparently <laughs> i'm unable to move on i have attachment issues <laughs> so i'm gonna pop on some tati glue on this and let this dry while i'm doing my wing and for my wing i am using my maybelline liquid liner and this is the master precise all day liquid liner and then i'm gonna go ahead and pop on these lashes okay so I feel like it was a good decision to go a little crazy on the eyes, you know what, cause why not? I feel like the videos that I'm doing more focused stuff, I like to go a little crazy on the eyes. I'm going into my Thrive Brilliant Face Brightener Primer, and this is an illuminating primer. I wanna use a different foundation today. I don't trust all them foundations that I got in that drawer though, which is why I don't use them. But we gonna try. I'm gonna use a stick foundation today. I'm gonna use my Milk Flex Foundation in Golden Deep. And I always love this stick foundation. This one in the Benefits Air Stick Foundation are my favorite stick foundations right now. I really wanna try the minted one. I have never tried the minted one. I got 
all their other launches in PR, but I did not get any of their foundation, stick foundations in PR, which I hate because I really want to try it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and purchase it. Me and Jackie are shade twins. So sis, if you know what shade Jackie wears in the minted stick foundation, please let me know. <laughs> Cause I would definitely love to uh, purchase that sometime soon. I'm gonna take the Sigma Flat Kabuki brush to blend this out real quick. Let's give the stick foundation her props. Cause I'm loving it <laughs> for a little quick, easy coverage. One thing I know about this one is that it does. <laughs> Look at my nail. Maya, all you gotta do is go in there and pop it back on. But I don't feel like getting up right now. I don't feel like it. But anyway, I'm gonna weave. This foundation does get really kind of oily, which is why I don't use it a whole, whole lot. It gets really like dewy looking and not dewy in a good way. <laughs> okay, do we have a concealer we can use that I haven't used in a second? First, before we move on, since this is about powders, number one, you can use a powder to set your primer. I know I'm a little late since we already put foundation on, but for my ladies who are oily, one thing that is a really great thing to do with powder to help to soak up your oils before it hits the front of your product that's on your face, if that makes sense, is to set your primer. I have done this a lot in my previous videos, like literally like over a year ago, because as an oily person, especially in your T-zone, if you set your primer, it kind of helps your oils to hit the powder and have to saturate the powder first before it gets through to your foundation and your concealer and your setting powder and your setting spray on top if that makes any sense. So that is a good explanation as far as how, why it works. Also for my deeper skin tone ladies, always use a skin tone powder. So not like your Laura Mercier's or anything that's a light. You wanna use something that is brown toned. That's perfect for you. For me, I would use like the Minted Skin Silk, which is in medium deep. But if you're deeper, deeper skin tone, Minted does have a shade that's deeper than that. And that one would be for you. I can't think of the name of it because it was too deep for me. I actually gave it away to my sister-in-law, but that would be the perfect one to use to set your primer before you go in with foundation, just to help to soak in those oils. If you dry, just don't do that. Avoid that step like the plague, sis. Don't do it, but if you oily, sis, that might be your saving grace. So I don't use my Juvia's Place concealer a whole lot. So I think I'm gonna go into this and this one is in number 12. And I'm gonna use this to highlight the face in the normal areas where I usually do highlight the face. I feel like the reason that I don't use this concealer too, too much is because it is more of a warm tone concealer. As you can see, I prefer, even though I feel like, y'all let me know in the comments what you think my undertone is. I go back and forth between neutral and like a yellow undertone, but y'all let me know what y'all think. I love more of a neutral toned concealer to highlight my face. That's why I don't use this that much because I prefer it to be more neutral toned. And this sponge is from Thrive Cosmetics. And I'm just gonna go in, matter of fact, oh, I was supposed to let it sit. I was supposed to let it sit, sis. Supposed to let it sit. Replace that, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Let's just let it sit for a minute. <laughs> But since we're letting it sit, I'm gonna go ahead and lighten a little bit more up with the Caramel Fit Me Concealer from Maybelline. Just to, mm, that is not that big of a difference. Maya, what? I thought this was gonna be way lighter. Ugh, okay, wait. Okay, we're just gonna add that afterwards. <laughs> okay, back to waiting. <laughs> Okay, that's enough waiting. It ain't been nearly as long as I wanted it to be, but I'm very impatient right now. So <laughs> I'll go ahead and start to blend out. See, I just prefer, uh, okay, that does look good, but, <laughs> but I don't know. I just prefer the look of a concealer that is more neutral versus a yellow tone or yellow undertone. I don't know y'all, maybe I'm just being weird and doing the most. I mean, if I was, there's nothing new there. And you guys see how we're kind of too light in some areas. I'm gonna go back into what I use for my foundation and go over where that concealer is meeting the foundation shade to, you know, mute it, kill that line and bring in the natural shade of the face back versus the lighter shade. Okay, now I'm looking at the camera. Y'all look, this is exactly why I don't go into concealers like this. 
Like, I don't feel like I'm looking real just yellow in the middle of the face. Oh, Maya, should have followed your first thoughts. But it's fine. It's fine. That's fine. I'm gonna take a lighter concealer. Let me test this one. This is the ColourPop. That's fine. Okay, this is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer in Medium Dark 145 Warm, which to me looks more neutral. And I'm gonna actually switch sponges because I don't wanna reinforce that color. That is gonna take away some of that yellow, I'm hoping. Yeah, it worked a little bit. Y'all see how we... <laughs> This. Yeah, that worked. I think it worked. I'm gonna find out in, in editing if it really worked or not. So we're not necessarily gonna contour today. I kind of wanna like cream bronze. It's really what I wanna do today. So for that reason, I'm gonna dip into my, my Fenty concealer in 480, cause it does have more of a reddish undertone that kind of gives you bronzy feels versus contour feels. I'm kind of just wanting to bring the color back into my face cause I feel like the lighter concealer kind of just washed me out a little bit. So I feel like this is what is going to help me to just come back to life without like contouring and sculpting the face okay so I definitely put on way too much on the nose but we're gonna fix it I'm gonna fix it with you guys so you kind of can see how I fix it I'm gonna go ahead and push this into this part of the nose or the under eye area <laughs> and then go back into the sponge that I use for the concealer to kind of mute that and also make sure I'm not losing where I want it to be lighter under the nose under the eye, what, Maya, girl, life, get it. And then I'm gonna take this sponge, which I could take this sponge too, but I just like how this one's shaped more because this one is, has like a flat side, it's harder to do. So I'm gonna take this and just start to go down the nose. And this is gonna start to kill those lines. Y'all see how it's already not as harsh. And then I'm gonna go over on the side. Without like blending it into the middle, I kind of like take my time on each side, but I do the middle first because I don't want to bring this darker shade on that middle line going down, if that makes sense. And she's, she's fixed. We see a little bit of a smash, but she ain't like contoured, you know? Yeah, girl, she the one. We can finally get into powder, which is what a lot of y'all came here for. But I feel like a lot of y'all also came here to just hear me talk. <laughs> so, either way, I got you. So I feel like one of the main questions that everyone has about powders is setting versus baking. So we're gonna get a little deeper into that here in a moment after we dive into more of a powder conversation. But just real quick, sis, in case that's the info you came here for, setting and baking are two completely, completely different things. <laughs> Setting your makeup, which don't get it twisted, is not interchangeable with setting spray. Setting your makeup is all about setting liquid or cream product. We're gonna do a little demonstration. Here is our concealer. She's wet, right? Let's blend it out a little bit, you know, cause that's how she look on the face. We're gonna do the same thing underneath as another example. And we gonna blend her out, right? I'm gonna take some setting powder and I'm just gonna go into my regular Laura Mercier setting powder real quick just for demonstration purposes. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna set this bottom one. So I'm pressing it into it and she's set. And I know it's kind of hard to see the concealer, but as you can see this one, it looks a little more blurred out versus this one looks kind of like just sitting there. If you take your finger and wipe the wet one, you're gonna have a lot more like movement and a lot more transfer. Do y'all see how it transferred there? Versus, I'm taking another finger, going over it with the powder. Please tell me that you see that this one is barely there versus this one being there, okay? So when you are setting a wet product or a cream product, what you are doing is you are making it less transferable, you are making it more matte, you're getting rid of the dewiness of the face, and you are just making it look a little bit more like skin, like matter skin. Is matter a word? <laughs> yeah. In general, <laughs> you are making sure it doesn't move as well. So obviously like you just saw, it's easy for it to move. Somebody gonna come and slap you across the face, their hand is gonna be 
brown or whatever your skin complexion is their hands gonna be that color and I'm sorry y'all for my phone I'm texting my friends right now but if they do it with the powder which I just showed you guys it's not gonna be as much as your skin complexion <laughs> and it's also not gonna rub off as much you know how when you cry when you have makeup on and your tear drops down and let's say you ain't had no time to get it together and you see the outline of it the reason you see the outline of it is because of the powder that product is stuck in that spot because of the powder therefore if a tear comes down and it gets rid of it you can see where it was stuck at and that it didn't move around that tear if you cry like this i can easily just take a sponge and go over it and we good if you take a sponge and go over a tear where you already had some <laughs> powder on it ain't gonna work you gotta do a lot more <laughs> because you have already set it in place so before we actually set the face we're gonna quickly talk about the shades that you need as far as setting the face in relation to your skin complexion so depending on what you are going for the look you're going for is the color that you are gonna go into when you set your face. Okay, sis? And also, you might wanna use one or two. Y'all know my process is I always go in with a lighter powder in my highlighted areas, meaning the places that I want to be lighter, under my eyes, down my nose, this part of the forehead, right here and right here. Sometimes here. But sometimes, most times I will go into a skin tone powder there because I don't want it to be as bright. So that's when you go into more of a translucent, whiter powder. I don't recommend girls of my complexion and darker going into something this dark white. Because look at the Laura Mercier, which is this, versus this Revolution Pro powder, which is dark white. I don't recommend our skin complexions going for this. This, that, this is a real quick way to get flashback and to look real cakey and ashy. No put her to the side you want to go with something that's more like a taupey shade of translucent not white that's if you want like a lighter under eye also depending on how deep your skin complexion is you can also go into something that's a lighter skin tone powder as well which is not going to give you as much of a stark lighter look than this one is for me personally I, like I said like it to be lighter so on this side of the face I am gonna go ahead and set my under eye with my Laura Mercier, which is the normal thing that I usually do. And I pat into my powder, too much is there. I'll put it on the back of my hand just to block and press into the skin. Now what I'm doing right now is setting, I'm not baking. When you set, you are pressing the powder into the skin. And please notice that it is a different technique for those with oily skin versus someone with more dry skin. If you have really dry skin all around, especially under the under eye, do not do this method. Use a brush maybe that's shaped like this or like a flat brush that's shaped like this. Dip into your powder, blow it, and just swipe or press with the brush because it will give you like a lighter coverage if you don't need it why do it and don't make your dry situation even worse number one we notice the difference of the mattifying -ness of our powder so we super matte under the eye over here we still real dewy and oily not oily but you know what i mean <laughs> on this side so you see the difference there it's here just down over here we can easily blend it out this one drop down sis Go on to my how to fix makeup mistakes video because sis, you ain't gonna fix that with just a sponge. I'm also gonna take this one and just show you guys that if there is a difference here on this part, so I'm gonna take my brush for this and I can take my sponge. It really depends on how bright you want. If you want it a little bit brighter, you would take your sponge. If you don't want it as bright, I would take a brush. I'm gonna blow it a little bit and start to just define my cheekbone with this. This is my Maybelline Fit Me in medium deep 30. And when you do do the powder under here, you always kind of want to bring it here and connect it to the edge of your mouth. That's the direction that you want to go in when you do this. Anyway, you see how this brightened us up? Look at this side versus that side. That is what the powder just did. So we are setting, but we are also like creating a shape of the face down here. But that was not the point. The point is that <laughs> these two shades can be kind of interchangeable. This is a skin tone shade, but it's not as like deep as some of them are. So I just wanted to show you guys how that looked underneath. I'm taking my sponge just to dab around this because I don't want it to be super, super harsh. 
and we are going to talk about setting the whole face here in a moment i'm just kind of focusing on highlighting so hold your little horses sis or go ahead and use the mini markers whatever you want to do <laughs> we can see that we are still creasing over here because obviously we have not gone in with any setting powder setting powder is what keeps you from creasing <laughs> If you're not going for a more of a lighter shade under the eye and you really just want to conceal, you just want to make your whole face the same shade, then I would go for a skin tone colored powder. Because if you go in with something even light like this, like if you're anything darker than me, this is light. <laughs> So you don't want to go into this. You don't want to go into something that looks like Laura Mercier or something that looks like the minted light tan. I also have the Fenty Banana. This would be too light as well. Even the Fenty Honey would be too light. I would go into something like the Laura Mercier Medium Deep or the Medium Deep from Minted if you're my complexion or if you're deeper than me, the deeper minted one. I would go into something like that because you are essentially just like trying to set so they don't go nowhere, not to brighten, if that makes sense. If that is the case, sis, and you don't wanna be bright and you just set with a skin tone powder, that is what you use to set your face in general for anyone who is either not going bright under the eyes or if you are just kinda of trying to make everything the same shade. Using a skin tone powder is the best thing to do to set the entire face so that you just get rid of the sheen that's everywhere. Y'all can already see half the face. Some of my face is like matte on this side and still shiny. The whole face is like that. And if you don't put powder on it, it's gonna stay that way, which makes you more susceptible to transferring, which keeps the product movable and transferable, and that's not what we want. So we do wanna set the entire face. And if you are a brown skin lady, definitely use a skin tone powder for that. Okay, so this is a prime example. I usually would use my skin tone powder. I'm all out. Can I get some Lord Mercy? Oh, I got a little Lord Mercy at medium deep. Oh, sis. I didn't know that was in there. I'm gonna take my big fluffy brush and dip into that, blow it a little bit, and then just start to brush over the other areas that I didn't set with the lighter powder. Now everything on this side is looking matte. You see the clear difference, minus the, you know, creases, girl, just forget about that, we are gonna fix that in a minute. But we're looking at sheen, you know? So we are set on this side, we are not set on this side. If you are out, of a skin tone powder to set the whole face. You can use a translucent. Like I said, never use the white tone powder. Sis, no, put it away. But if you wanna use like a yellow tone, I do have my Sasha Buttercup here. You don't wanna use this to set the whole face, but you can use this to set the under eyes. For my deeper tone ladies, like I would say, maybe my complexion to anywhere deeper. You can use this interchangeably with like the Maybelline or something that's skin toned because this will give you a brighter look. These, this, this is specifically Specifically, I'm gonna say this loud and clear, for my ladies who want to brighten <laughs> in areas, not someone that just wants to be one color. So if you wanna be one color, I definitely would stay away from yellow tone powders because this is to brighten for deeper tone women. And I don't recommend this for my lighter, fair tone ladies. I'm gonna go ahead and set the other side of the face. And then one side we're gonna bake and the other side we not gonna bake. So we can see what the difference is. Now, number one, like I said, baking and setting are two completely different things. So you do not want to go in and bake initially. I'm gonna say that again, sis. Yeah, back, just say it with me. We do, we not, do not want to want go, to go in, in and bake, and bake initially. initially. No. We don't. And here's the reason why. That is a prime way to make yourself look cakey. Because when we bake, we are putting on excess product. And we are literally like piling it on, piling it on, piling it on. That is not the first interaction that you want your wet products to have with powder. Because that's how it gets cakey and starts to look clumpy and sis, that's not what we want. What we want to do is set it first set it in place, don't have the agenda of making it look super light, and then <laughs> assess the situation and then bake. So just to give a little bit of a difference so you guys can see a half and half, um, my Sasha Buttercup is pretty old. I would go into this, but y'all, I'm a little scared too, <laughs> to be honest. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Honey from Fenty, and y'all know this stuff is matte, 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 so I'm gonna pop into that, put it on the back of my hand a lot. 
because I don't need that to mess my face up right now. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and set the under eye. Like I said, we are not using excess powder. We are just pressing it in to make sure that we are setting our liquid or our cream powder into place is the goal here. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but I do see a clear difference of the more yellow tone on this side and the more translucent on this side. I feel more neutral on this side and more warm on this side, which would make sense because of the colors that we use. So there is a difference. To even that out, I am gonna go ahead in with a little bit of honey on the translucent side, just to kind of give me the same look on both sides so we can really compare once we do bake. And again, I'm setting the rest of the face with my Laura Mercier powder. And then we're gonna highlight this area with the Maybelline powder. Same thing we did on the other side. So now we are going to bake on one side and we go, matter of fact, I did not, I did not set my nose, sis. Why is that my nose? Now one thing that you guys probably do see me do is bake on my nose. That's pretty much the only thing that I ever bake. But for now, I am just gonna set it and press that powder in. And you probably also notice that I don't go in with powder on the sides like that. So I'll take like a fluffy brush or even something that's a little bit more tailored would probably be a better idea. And take my <laughs> skin tone powder and go on the sides. Cause anywhere that you put a wet product needs to be set sis or she gonna move and or get shiny real quick. Or stay shiny pretty much. <laughs> it's never gonna get unshiny if you don't use powder. Someone who is baking, you kinda just want to make everything brighter. You're going for that bright Kim K under eye look, you know sis. And you can either do that with a lighter concealer or you can do it with baking to make everything brighter. So. What we gonna do is we gonna bake on one side and then we gonna keep it set on the other side just to see what our difference is. And supposedly it gets brighter the longer you leave it on. So I am gonna take our normal regular smegular translucent powder from Laura Mercier and I'm gonna use my <laughs> Get it together. So I'm gonna take my sponge, I'm gonna dip into this, and I am gonna still push it off a little bit, but I'm gonna layer it. I wanna actually see that powder. <laughs> that is baking. So I'm not pushing it in to blend it in. I am putting it there to bake, to brighten that area. Sometimes you can get really precise in your baking because it will help to really give that lighter feel exactly where you want it. And you also wanna make sure that you're as even as possible when you are baking. I like to use like the skin tone on the forehead as well as down here. So I'm gonna take this Fit Me in 30 and I'm gonna bake in those areas with this shade. Most people will allow their baking to happen for about, I don't know, like two to five minutes. So we're gonna let this sit for a quick little second and we're gonna see what the difference is in a moment. Okay, so I feel like five minutes have gone by. I haven't exactly looked. <laughs> Didn't really time myself since. But you know, it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna take a brush <laughs> and I'm gonna start to dust off the powder to see what we get with this bake. Now, do you already see how light this is compared to this side? Sis, that's the bake. That's, that's what we're getting. <laughs> All right, so this is what we have. We have this side baked. We have that side not baked. Now, if I were to actually bake, I probably would not have baked right here, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a whole full look. Do you see the difference? This side is a lot more natural. This side is a lot more bright Kim K, you know what I'm saying? So, I think this is gonna come together, I think this is gonna come together better once we actually put on a bronzer. So let's go ahead and put on a little bit of a bronzer. And this is my Yacht Life bronzer from Minted. So I feel like we was looking real ashy there with the baking on this side. So we want to just get the whole look so we can really see the difference of just setting versus baking. So this is our difference. We are, matter of fact, let's do the nose too. Hold up, getting too ahead of myself. <laughs> I just want you guys to see like a complete look and how it's actually supposed to look versus he made on to me just giving you a demonstration and you're just like, well, sis, face not done. Maybe that's why it looks that way. I don't think you can see that much of a difference, but it is to me. I don't know if on camera you can see it, but to me, there is a stark difference. This side is a lot more bright, obviously, but it looks a lot more artific artificial. I cannot talk today. It looks a lot more artificial in my personal opinion. And so I'm not a fan 
of baking that much especially down here y'all know i don't really go into baking down there i like to keep it nice and neutral and natural because you can see the very stark differences here i do feel very whiter on this side a lot more ashy ash city granted a lot of people might bake differently it definitely depends on what kind of powder you do use but just for the sake of the video the point is to show the difference between the finishes that you get with setting versus baking on top of your set i hope that that was helpful for you guys <laughs> and i'm gonna just go ahead and work to try to fix this because i don't want to be super super like baked so i am gonna take my sponge that has no powder on it and just kind of push that bake into the skin which i feel like it's a really good way to fix a bake because we want the skin to be looking more natural like this side so i'm just pressing it in do not swipe just to make it look more natural it's that powder sitting on top of your set that's really was giving you that lighter look which is a point of baking but i don't want to know more I think I made my point. So <laughs> I'm just pushing it into the skin to kind of make it reminisce this side. Reminisce, is that right the word? Look like, remind you of, whatever. <laughs> and our bake is fixed. So I'm gonna do my under eye off camera and I'll be right back. So we are gonna pop into a blush today since we are doing kind of a blush tones in the eyes. Might as well, sis. I'm gonna go into my Buxom Wonderlust blush. Blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go into my Buxom Wonderlust blush in Dolly. <laughs> and I'm gonna take this brush and just put it on the apples. Oh, there it is, sis. Oh, my cheeks. Y'all, I am getting into the blush. I can't lie. I love it. <laughs> and I did just get this new highlight palette from Morphe. And sis, she is so pretty. I'm more drawn to this color, but I did notice that it is kind of stark yellow and that's not what I want. So I'm actually going to mix that one, which is Big Bang with the Mirage here, which is more of a neutral gold shade to just highlight it up a little bit. Nothing too stark, just a smidge of a shine to this. And I forgot to add El Malacone at the bottom, kind of as the inner corner highlight. So I am going into that right here because I forgot. I was looking at my face like something and messing says something ain't right. Something ain't right. And I'm going into a clean brush to just kind of dull that out. Before we go into lips, I am going to set my face really quick. And I do feel like I need some moisture, especially on this side of my face where I baked. I'm just feeling extremely dry on this side of my face. Really dry. I don't know if it looks that way. But yeah, I'm gonna use my Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist from ColourPop. I did focus a lot of that on this side so that I could, you know, get rid of the dryness I was feeling. I just feel like when I bake, I'm dry. Even when I've had other makeup artists do my face or when I've done my own face and baked, I just, y'all, I'm not really a fan. I think that's obvious at this point, but yeah, I was feeling dry. <laughs> so I'm gonna go into my BFF4 liner from ColourPop and Shayla, which is a really nice reddish brown tone that I felt like looked Looks nice with this look oh that's cute okay this is metropolitan from nabla and i feel like that gives us a really cute vibe with the eyes it's not doing too much since the eyes are doing a lot too <laughs> but i think we're just going to leave it like that. i don't know i kind of want a gloss too mm, let's just let's just see it doesn't kill you to do it just a little bit of a gloss this one is the renaissance shine theory lip gloss from nabla as well and sis we are done let's go ahead and wrap it up Right, y'all so this is our finished look i have been telling you guys for a couple weeks that i was gonna come out with this video so i really really hope that it was helpful to you guys if it was please make sure that you give me a big thumbs up comment below and let me know what you thought about this video also make sure that you hit subscribe below if you have not yet sis and i will see you next time bye